Um, we're going to do one more of these, and then we'll talk about a, a, a few other things. So let's go ahead. I, I really like the, um, the revenge against past self concept. Um, let's try and expand that by combining it with something interesting else on the board. Um, or, yeah, can, is there something interesting on the board that we haven't done yet that, uh, that the past self one could do? And All right, we'll go here, there, and then there. Oh, wow. That's awesome. That works really well. Uh, I was thinking the topic afterlife plays into that, and past self is trying to, the future self is trying to keep past self from getting there through their unconscious. Okay, okay, awesome. Okay, could be something like that. The, the immediate thing that th popped into my mind was you have, <clears throat> the past self went through some sort of redemption, right? You have, you have an um, evil dude goes through redemption, sees in the future and sees what happens to him and doesn't want that to happen to him or something like that. And so you've got this conflict between for, um, future self and past self where one is trying to, you know, something like that could be really interesting. Old Spock, yeah, something like that. Um, so... <laughs> Let's, um, let's take one of these um, and add more to it uh, just to keep, to keep doing this. Um, let's go ahead and let's stick, uh, the, hmm, let's stick one of these characters over here and here. Do, are we fine with the 80-year-old man, the 80-year-old singer? We're going to do this. 80-year-old bard is our main character. doesn't have to be pop singer, can be pop singer. Let's, we did the last one, turned out to be um, science fiction E. Um, let's do this one uh, more fantasy. So let's add a magic to this, not a science. Um, which of these magics are we going to add over here? The eye color magic. Okay, what does the eye color magic do? Somebody who hasn't raised their hand yet. Have you taught, said one yet? No, go for it. Um, you can you give an elemental power to something that will color your eye color. Okay, excellent. Elemental colors. What, what Eye colors changed. Okay, his eye colors, are, or he's heterochromatic or something like that. Cool. Uh, two different eye colors or something. Okay, so his eye color is changing. You can do magic based on your eye color. Elementary control, let's give him something that has to do with singing. So, um, you know, his eye color lets him do something magically with, um, with his... Okay, wow, that's pretty good. Very well done. Okay, he can hold his breath as long as he wants. The reason he's so popular is because he creates his own pyrotechnics while he's singing. Oh, <laughs> Oh, that's cool. Okay, we're going to go with heterochromatic. He's got both of those, right? Um, no, that's actually pretty cool. If you imagine someone who was able to do pyrotechnics, um, you know, um, if, if we hadn't done it already, you could already also have the person that travels back in time, and it's like, you know, he's a rock star from the future who gets trapped in a fantasy world. That's actually been done a little bit. Spell singer. Um, you can go look that up, but it's fun. But anyway, okay, is there anything else we can add to that to make it even more interesting? Uh, something we've done up here. Can we add one of the other characters in as a foil? Right over here. Okay, that could be cool. Very well done. Okay, what else? Someone who hasn't talked yet, spoken yet. Come on, quiet people. I'm going to make you do something. Pick one of these up here. Try and combine them in an interesting way. You've already talked. I have, but I have a question. Okay, okay, go for it. Uh huh. And hers, like, as part of her job, she takes people's eyes and she's not supposed to see them. Okay. Okay. The mortician wanting his eyes makes a little more sense than the vampire, I think. I like that. All right. And like, for example, the mortician would, would be, you know, kind of like a, some kind of a black market of selling, selling and swapping out in people's eyes. Oh, wow. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Okay. All right. We're going we're gonna to stop this for now. Um, we could keep going on this. Um, this is not necessarily how I come up with books, um, but it is kind of what you can do in 30 minutes version of how I come up with books. Um, it is one way to come up with stories. These sorts of things are particularly good for discovery writers. Doing a brainstorming session like this, going and looking for writing prompts online and combining three of them in an interesting way. What you're looking for in that methodology is combining things in an interesting way that creates conflict. All right? So story is about conflict. If you don't have things going wrong, you don't have a story.
you also want to try and create a story where your protagonist can have an active role rather than a completely reactive role. This is tough. Um, if you look at any superhero movie, you'll see how tough it is to make the protagonist active and not just reacting to what the villains are doing. So as you design your plot and your story, that's what I want you to kind of be focusing on. Um, I want you to be focusing on an interesting conflict for a character. Put your, have your character have passions other than the story, it's, uh, the plot. Have them have a life other than whatever's going to hit them like a freight train, okay? Make them interesting in their own right, regardless of which style of writing you're using. And then try to think about how am I going to make them active rather than reactive. We are about out of time. Um, I think I want to save uh, a big world building lesson for next time, even though the dude wanted one. Who's the dude that wanted one? Yeah, we'll do a big world building one next time. I really want to get you jump started on your story before we talk too much about world building. Um, you need to be jump starting and thinking about things like this, conflict and that sort of thing. Um, so brainstorming first, I think, was the better idea. Let's do questions for just a minute or two. My question is, should we, or are you assuming that every one of us already has a story that we're married to for this semester? No. Or are we still working through that process? You're still working through that process. I want you to have one by next week. In other words, I want your first thousand words submitted for next week. It can be really rough. Remember, we're not going to grade these um, qualitatively. Uh, but I want you to come up with something by Monday, a thousand words that you've written, okay? Um, and this is going to be some sort of new story. In fact, I want you to not be married to anything for this class. You can write 3,000 words on it, then abandon it and start again. I would really rather you not do that more than once, but you can do that, okay? Um, and I want you to be thinking about something like this. Perhaps you have an idea already you haven't written on. It has to be something you haven't written on, and you want to go for it. That's okay, too. But ask yourself some of these questions. Can I make my protagonist a little more dynamic? What is my plot archetype for this story? And how can I make it less of a situation and more of a story? Um, and what, is, you know, what type of plot archetype is this? And well, how am I going to put my own twist on it? How is it not going to be just another revenge story? How is it going to be my revenge story? How is it going to be interesting? We'll talk more about how to do that as the, the course progresses. But I wanted to give you something to kick you off.